Seventh grade lesson 9.3 is area of composite figures and composite figures is like those odd shaped things that we need to maybe find the area for and we don't have a formula for that. And so this lesson is going to teach you the workaround. How do you handle that? So in their explore activity, they give us this odd shaped item and they say, tell, tell me how to find the area of this. And one way, of course, you're gonna start thinking, well, let me just count up the boxes in here and that would work, uh, except you've got these half, maybe not quite half, maybe a little more than half size boxes, and then it becomes a mess, right? And so you dig into your toolbox and your brain of formulas for finding area, because that's going to be just a little bit easier. And if you dig in there, you may uh, dust off the cobwebs and find the area of a rectangle was length times width. Or similarly, the area of a parallelogram being base times height in case your rectangle is leaning, right? Same formula, you're taking a length and you're taking the height, length and the height. Either way, it's just on a parallelogram, if it's leaning, you're taking the length and the height, not this part. And um, in a rectangle, this part is the same as that part because they're nice and lined up, right? So same formula, basically. And what we learned last year also is that really every triangle is some form of a cut in half rectangle, right? So the formula for a triangle was that base times the height, but we cut it in half because it's half of a rectangle. You can add a mirrored version onto that triangle and then you'll have a parallelogram. So um, you just take the parallelogram formula and cut it in half for a triangle. Okay, so those are formulas that we knew already. And so there's a couple more that we learned. We learned area equals pi r squared, right? We just learned that for the area of a circle. So that will be handy this year's composite figures will include those. Last year, you also probably learned the trapezoid one. It's a tough one for me to remember. I don't always remember it. It's one half the height times base one plus base two. Remember, trapezoid is this shape that looks like it got caught in a mouse trap and it's uh, the triangle's head got cut off. So that's why I remember trapezoid mouse trap. Um, you use this formula to find the area of a trapezoid. Now. If you don't remember it, it's not a problem if this one isn't stuck in your memory. That's not a problem because I can convert this into two triangles, use this formula for both of those triangles and do the rectangle and use the, rect uh, the, the parallelogram rectangle, whichever, and use the formula for that. So if you don't forget it, it causes a little more work, but it's not difficult work, so you could do it. So these all come back into play rather than trying to say, okay, that's about a third of the square, that's about two thirds, that's about one quarter, and trying to piece those all together because this is going at an angle. Let's use our formulas. And then let's go and look at this shape. And let's break it into knowable pieces based on what we know here. So here I'm going to break this into this triangle. And I'll use this formula for it. And then I think what I'll do is I'll cut this off here and do the two separate rectangles. That will work for me, okay? Maybe you thought, mm, I'm going to cut this here like this and do two rectangles. Okay, either way we do it, we're going to get the same answer. So we're just breaking it into pieces that we have formulas for. So let's say I broke it like this. Now I just go find my measurements. Well, I'll tell you what I do first. What I do first is I draw the shape. I use a lot of paper for this because it helps me see what's going on. So I draw, I know I have a triangle from that top. I know I have this rectangle, the up and down one, and I know I have this rectangle. Once I have my shapes, and usually I give myself more room for it, I put my formulas for those. A triangle is one half times base times height, the rectangle is base times height, and this rectangle is base times height, or length times width, same thing. Then I go plug in my measurements. Um, for the triangle, this has a base of eight. So I counted all the boxes along here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I put one half times eight. Then I count my height, which is just one, two, 
two to the peak. I can do eight times two is 16, and one half of 16 is eight. I will add that to one of my rectangles. So I'm going to do this rectangle. It has a base of three and a height of one, two, three, four, five, six. So three times six is 18. Take the part off there. And finally, the last rectangle, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four for the height, five times four is 20. So I will add all of these together because I had eight for the area here, 18 for the area here, and 20 for the area here. So all added together is 28 plus 18, 38, 46, right? 46 boxes. So when you're working with composite figures, you're going to break, look at the figure first, decide which pieces you're going to break it up into. I highly suggest drawing a basic piece. It doesn't have to match it perfectly, but draw the pieces you broke it into, spread it out on paper, give yourself some room, don't squash it like I did there. Underneath each of those pieces you broke it into, write the formula that goes with it for the area, and then fill in the numbers, the measurements, the dimensions of each of those shapes, calculate, and add them together. Uh, sometimes you might have shapes that are odd, where you have um, this sort of thing going on. You have a rectangle, and they want the rectangle without this value in it. So you might find the rectangle area, find the circle area, subtract instead of add together like we did, subtract the circle area from the rectangle area to account for the hole in it. So just, you know, it's just kind of reasoning out what's going on with that. Okay, and look at that. Our book gives us this handy dandy list of formulas in case we forgot. <clears throat> um, so they've added a few more in there, but again, don't even worry if you don't have those memorized. The triangle one, you should remember in terms of building off that parallelogram. Parallelogram is base times height. If it were a rectangle, length times width, right? Same thing. These are kind of the same. Um, <clears throat> And if you remember, a triangle is always half of a parallelogram, then you just take this formula and multiply by half. They put square in there. It's s to the second power, right? Because the square, I mean, if you only remember that a square is also a parallelogram, all of its sides are the same as each other. So you're doing base s times height s, which is s to the second power. If you just worry about base times height on a square, it's you're still going to get the same answer there um, so you're fine it's maybe good to know that formula but if you forget it no worries and then again like I mentioned before the trapezoid formula <clears throat> if you can remember it great it's useful to use in this lesson if you can't remember it then you just break that trapezoid up into two triangles and a rectangle and use the ones that you know um, they should have added circle on here. Uh, maybe they're going to get to that, but you do know the area of a circle. A uh, circle area is pi r squared. Okay. Let's look at this in action. Now on page 278 of your book, they walk you through another uh, practice one, but they've walked it through and they've explained it all the way through. So I'm going to let that explanation in writing speak for itself. In that one, they do use the trapezoid um, formula. So if you want to see how that one worked through, go ahead and look at that. I'm going to look at the your turn one and break it down for you. So you have another example on top of that. So step one, I'm going to look at my composite figure, odd shaped thing, like part of a rocket ship, right? And so I kind of look at it and go, hmm, okay. Um, I see this triangle here different than this triangle here because that one has a height of two, that one has a height of three. So they're going to be different. And then this rectangle, uh, maybe if somebody wanted to use the trapezoid one, they could have split it this way and said, I'm going to calculate the rectangle and the trapezoid. That's what I'm going to do. And so you could do that too. Either way will work. Um, let's go ahead and do the rectangle and the trapezoid one. Maybe I'll do both. We could do both. That way you can see it a couple of ways. So 
let's go with the trapezoid one first. So I'm going to take that trapezoid and I'm going to take that rectangle. And I'm going to write the formulas for a trapezoid. It's one half height times base one plus base two. And for the rectangle, it's base times height or length times width, same thing. Okay, fill in the numbers. One half times the height of this. So if I'm looking at this this way, that's going to be a uh, height of three times base one. Okay, that's going to be a tricky one because I have to put several pieces together. We're talking about this base. And it does not matter if I call the top base one and the bottom base two or the bottom base one and the top base two. I'm just adding them together so it doesn't matter. So I'm looking at this and I know that this piece right here is four, but then it extends out this way two more. So there's six and then it extends out this way three more. So there's nine. So you do have to do a little bit of detective work, but no problem. And then my base um, two, since I called that base one, I will call this base two. Um, it's the same as this over here, so it will be four. And then as far as my rectangle goes, I need the base of this rectangle. It's eight and the height, which is four. Now I calculate uh, parentheses, order of operations, right? Parentheses go first. So that's 13 times three times one half. And this one is eight times four, which is 32. This is multiplication. I'm gonna do that first. I can multiply any of these first. A lot of times if I see an even number here that's easy to split in half, I do that first. But in this case, I've got two odd numbers. So I'll add them together. I'm sorry, I will multiply them. 13 times three is going to be 39. Um, and half of 39, I will have to divide 39 by two. 39 divided by two. And that's 9, 18. Okay, I want to take a look at another one. So we have this shape, like a basketball key where your basketball hoop is here, free throw lines there, only a short one because the base is the same as height. This is a square and we could use the formula for square or we could use the formula for parallelogram because squares are parallelogram, base times height, which is side times side, side to the second power. So I have this square shape, um, I'm going to draw that. So our first step is just identify my shapes I'm dealing with. I have that square. I also have this circle, but it's only half of a circle. So I'll draw half of a circle and I'll deal with that when I get to the calculation. Um, my formula that I will use for the square is base times height or side times side, same thing. For the circle, I know the formula for a circle is pi r square, but I only need half of it. So when we get that, we'll divide it by two. I'm gonna make a note of it by saying divide by two underneath it to tell myself all the calculations I need to do. So that was step two, record the formulas down. Step three is fill in the dimensions. Okay, so the dimensions for the square are pretty easy, base times height, 10 times 10. And then for the circle, it's a little more difficult. They really didn't say anything here, but here's what we know. First, let's fill in what we know over here. We know area equals pi, which is 3.14 or 22 sevenths, times the radius. The radius is what I need. Remember, radius is from the center to the outside. Well, I know if this is a square that this whole length is 10, which would actually be my diameter, right? I have a full circle. This would be diameter. So half of 10 is my radius, half of 10 is five. So you could do a little bit of detective work to find out. And I want to divide that whole thing by two. Let's do 3.14 times five to the second power is 25. We'll divide that by two. 3.14 times 25 comes out to 78.5. I still need to divide that by two. And I get 39.25 when I divide that by two. 
The 10 times 10 was easy, that is 100, all added together. So this one was 100, this one was 39.25 as my area, both were meters square, add them together, and you're gonna get 139.25 meters square as your answer. So again, determine what shapes you're dealing with, what formulas do you use for those, fill in the dimensions, and then calculate it out. Page 279 uh, gives another example, example two, on a banquet room that's being carpeted. When you're going to carpet something, it's good to know the area so you know how much carpet to buy. They also walk you through um, the same process. They don't put the shapes, but they put the names of the shapes, and then they show the formulas, and then they fill in the dimensions and they calculate. So if you need to see another example like that one, uh, go ahead and look at page 279, the example they walk you through. Um, that one does a good job of explaining it. So again, you're just identifying shapes, what formulas, shapes with formulas you know, right? And then identify the formulas you can use for that, fill in the dimensions and go. That's all this lesson is about. So uh, go ahead and give it a shot. I believe you'll do great.